Good morning, welcome to shul.com. We are here learning from the Chok Israel Parashat Paichi Yom Hamishi. We're reading from Yosef the Chok. Yosef the Chok was an addition that was added to the Chok Israel. The Chok Israel was put together by Rav Chaim Bital. Rav Chaim Bital uh, put together from learning from the Arizal that every morning when you read the Chok Israel, you'll read from the Torah, from the Nevi'im, from the Ketubim, from the Mishnah, the Gemara, and the Zohar. Later on, the uh, Chida, Rabbeinu Hayim Yosef David Azulai, he added two components, one of them Musad and one of them Halakha. When a person learns the Chokli Israel, he gets a multifaceted uh, uh, learning that covers a little bit of everything, and, and, and this big ma'alot on, on this learning. So today we're reading from the Yosef the Chok, from the Musad, from the book. So, so the second guy is the one who just put it together? He's the one who added, he added, oh, yeah, he, he added the uh, thing. Rav Chaim Vital did it, about 500 years. He designed years. the whole... Yeah, he put it together. He actually chose which Mishnayot, which Gemariot, because it's very selective. It's not, it's not so thorough. And it doesn't follow a system either. Meaning, there is, you can start one Gemara one day and go to a different Gemara another day. Right, it doesn't do, it's not consistent. No, not consistent. But, and there's reasons for it. Each day has a Tikkun, has a, has a uh, reason. So we're reading from the book, Devarim Sheba Kedusha, Siman Bet. Amar Rav Huna Saba. The old Rav Huna said, the elder, Ketiv, it says in Tehilim, Ayn Chet, Lechem Abidim Achal Ish. What's Lechem Abinim? Lechem Abinim is when the Jews were in the desert, they ate man. And it was called the bread of angels because it, it was a spiritual food. When they ate the food, they didn't go to the bathroom for 40 years. Not number one, not number two. Could you imagine if 40 years eating and drinking and not one person used the restroom with three million people in the desert? So th- this is the... Uh, yeah, so Lechem Abinim Achalish. Lechem... This is the food that the angels, the angelic creatures, eat when they eat during holiness. What does that mean? And cleanliness. So, and also Israel, they also eat it with holiness. And cleanliness. What is it telling us? That when it says in the Torah, you should be holy and clean. That's talking about washing your hands before you eat bread. And then, and you should be holy. What does that mean? That's the water that you put after you eat the meal. Uh, and it says, I am uh, the Lord your God. That's talking about saying the Bekat So it's three components. In the Kadishtem, the Hitem Kedoshim, it's three components. One, washing your hands. One, Maim Maharonim, after you finish. And then, Brikat Amazon. Maim Maharonim, as a side point, is when you put water until the knuckles all around here. Maim Maharonim? Yeah. You put at the end of your meal, yeah, when, yeah. when you finish. Just use yeah, so sometimes people use just a little bit on the edges. The right way is to go all the way uh, until the knuckles. Um, that's the proper way. The same way when you do the Tzach Adayim, you only need to wash your hands one time, according to Shulchan Aruch. All the hands one time, all around, then do Shiv Shuf, you cover all the hands with water. We do three and three for the Kabbalah, but if a person needs to do one and one, he's okay. Same. Is there a, a specific amount of water that you need to use? Three ounces. That's the, and, and by the way, you definitely use more than three ounces. When you, the cups that we have today are much more than three ounces, but three ounces would be the minimum that you would you would do, um, and so, from a kli. And, huh? It has to be from a kli also. And from a keli, yeah. <laughs> In, into a keli, into a keli as well. It has to be from a keli into a keli as well. So it has to be both. Um, okay, and then let's continue. Vitem kedushim elu ma'im aharonim ki ani Hashem elu hechem zo berkat hamazon. That is talking about berkat hamazon. Bechol achel bitushav mitkut tomed malcha asharet. Whoever eats in cleanliness by washing his hands before and after he eats and Simbikata Mazon, he's eating just like the angels. Tahlita Seuda Shil Abraham Avin Walava Shalom the Zamin Bishlosha. When a person finishes eating, the the way he should do it is by having three people eat together in Bikata Mazon and he makes Zimun. 
שהוא מצווה רבה מקודשת אצל המלאכים. And this is a very elevated uh, action when you take three people and do zimun. Don't underestimate it. וזהו, כי על כן עברתם על עבדיכם, כי על כן תכינו לסעוד אצלי. ברכת המזון דאורייתא החמירו לאומרה מיושב. So when it came to Birkat Amazon, because it's from the Torah, you should say it's sitting down, as opposed to the Amidah, which is the most important part of the Tefillah, you say standing up. It's interesting. Birkat the Amazon, they told you to say it's sitting down. You have to take a moment when you say Birkat Amazon, who are you praying to? That you're praying to a creator of the world who deemed that it was okay for you to be able to eat this food, to have access to the food, and to be able to digest it properly and not have any issues. And you should have even a fear and if he is a person of proper spirit, he would put his focus into it that Birkat Amazon is a very elevated thing that God created the world. He created all creatures. Not every creature has always what they want and what they need. And Hashem gave you what you wanted, what you needed. You had a piece of bread. You had something that was able to satiate you. It's, uh, don't underestimate it. And that's today's Musa. Let's go to Halakha. The Rambam, Hilchot Teshuva, Perek Gimel. Kol mi shinicham al ha-mitzvot she'asa v'to'el ha-zichot z'amai v'dobo maho alti v'asiyatan halvai lo asiti otam ha-deze ibedet kulan. Scary, scary what he says here. He says, a person who, let's say did a lot of mitzvot, and for one reason or another, he regretted his mitzvot. He regretted it. He said, ah, what a waste of time, what a waste of effort. They take away all of his zechuyot, and he can get nothing back. When he goes to Olam HaHemet, or even here, there's what no... you don't regret, do you question? So, Is I, that, no, quite, that so what do you mean question? Uh, can, you, can you clarify it? Like more... Sometimes I question, like, is this all real? Like, well, you know, okay, so that's not regret. You know what I mean? like, no, all this stuff. I mean, all that's not regret. Hashem, that, 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 that's not. Re- we all we all question, and we all have things, and that's it, that's healthy. It's a healthy thing because when a person is questioning, that means he's able to differentiate between different things, and he's and analyzing. Questioning is not wrong as long as the guy doesn't leave the fold. There's a big difference between. You know, uh, one of the Gidulim asked someone that used to learn in Yeshiva that became a Heloni, and he had asked him, the guy, when he saw him, he completely went off the path, off the derech. He told him, he told him, I see you completely, you were in Yeshiva your whole life. How did you go to this extreme? He said, I had a lot of questions. He said, I have a lot, a lot of questions. So he told them, did you have those questions while you were in Yeshiva, or did you get those questions after Yeshiva? He says, no, after. He said, okay, so those are not questions. He goes, because those are all justifications for what you're trying to do. Really, you just want to do whatever you want. And that's today what most people, most people's interest today is not that, they're, that they hate the Torah, or they don't want to follow Torah mitzvot. It's just that they prefer their own desires, their own materialistic and bodily functions. Meaning, I mean, to, that's always with or without my question. It's ca- it's ca- it's kind of right. like R- Rabbi Breidowitz says it best in Or Sameach. He says a lot of times people come into him and tell him, "How do I know the Torah is real?" So he tells him, "Why are you asking that?" He goes, the "Torah says you can't eat pig. You you can't go with more than one lady, your wife. You can't do this. You can't do that." So he said, uh, "He said your question is what?" He said, "It's on the Torah. Is the Torah real?" He said, "If the Torah permitted you to do those things, would you still have a question on the Torah?" He said, "No." <laughs> Said no. So, so you don't have a question on Torah. You have a question on why you can't do those things. Okay, that's a different question. We'll talk about that in a different shiur. The, the reason, the reason why he breaks this down, he said, Rabbi Breidowitz is fantastic. I always said if I go to Israel, I'm going to go to Or Sameach for sure. They're a fantastic group. They learn in, in such a great way, and also Americans, so it's good, you know. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam. Shalom Yemei Baruch. I don't think they, it's it's in Jerusalem. I don't think yeah. they, too many people go from here. I think but, Eddie's kid. Oh, maybe it's possible. That, so, yeah. We're talking about a, we're talking about a specific mitzvah, right? So no, so here's talking about any mitzvah that a person regrets. Now, regret means literally he regrets. Now, why why would it all go away? Before we continue, why would someone lose his zechut if he regrets? You know why? Because you get no reward of any kind in this world. It's all spiritual. So if a person gives up, what is, what is he giving up? Spirituality. 
So the same way you acquire something spiritual, if you gave up that spirituality, it's gone. That's why they say, what's the only thing, one of the only things, I shouldn't say the only, the few things in this world that when a person receives it, he cleans up from his merit in the next world. One of them is honor, kavod. Why? Because kavod is not something you can feel and touch. It's all spiritual, kavod. It's like learning Torah. It's all spirituality. But what is it? When a guy gets honor, what did you give him? Nothing. An ego boost. Yeah, but you gave him nothing in physical way. So that has to be paid. God did everything in a balance. So where, where did that come from? There's always an energy. That, you know, there's all these laws in physics and science. You know, energy in, energy out. You can't create uh, um, mass. Uh, everything is whatever was created on earth. So here, where did he get all that kavod from? That came from Zichuyot. That's what they say when a person you know, does, uh, let's say, a donation to a shul, and they put a big plaque, that cleans from the zikhuyot of the merit, without a doubt. According to Rav Musafi, he says it absolutely cleans away. Now, it doesn't clean everything, but it does clean a significant amount. Now, everyone who comes there, oh, wow, you believe he, he bought that front, the front doors. Oh, wow, look at that. Wow, wow. Who's paying for all that? It's a serious question. I just... Uh, donated for lunch, right? In honor of my parents. Yes. So it's better that he just says anonymous donation, whatever. Um, don't mention so, me, don't mention my parents. No, so that you're doing to honor your parents. Yeah. That's Kibbutz and You want to give them that honor. That is actually, you yeah. want to do that. You're doing it specifically for that purpose yeah. to honor your parents. Want, so when your parents. You want your parents' presence. Honored. Yeah, no. No, but then, no, but then they're, they're giving them honor now diminishes their. Yes, ability. but you are required to give them honor. So I'm required to diminish the, the zechuyot. No, you're not no, diminishing no. the zechuyot because you have a commandment for that. You have no commandment to, in life, give donations in order so that people prop you up. Right. To do it samui min ayin is the highest level. Uh, I, Rabbi Shia Rubenstein from the Shul of Bel Harbor told me a story of a regular Litvach that came to, to the Chabad. He gave them a donation of $250,000. What did he do? He took the check. He wrote the check, he folded it up, he put it in the tzedakah box in the shul, and he left. Wow. He didn't even ask them for a receipt, didn't tell them, hey, listen, I just want you to know I gave you a big check. He put it in, huh? went in, and they got it, and they obviously they figured it out. And But he told me, look at the gadlut of this person. This person wanted to give the money to the shul to succeed in what they were doing. He just put it in the tzedakah box. Imagine you go to the tzedakah box, here, you have one guy put a dollar, one guy put a quarter, one guy $250,000 check. But he don't want the kavod. And I can tell you, Baruch Hashem, I, uh, I love to hang around older people that are wiser than me, more intelligent than me to learn, especially the successful in the Torah world, the business world, the Rabbanim. I can tell you the gadlut I see from people that do things hidden is tremendous. You see a beracha, and you see a kedusha when you're with them, even business people. You see that. I, I know one businessman, I don't want to say his name because he wants to be off the record, but he gives millions of dollars a year. A million dollars a year is twenty thousand dollars a week. This guy gives millions, so forty, fifty thousand dollars a week is giving to that guy. And I met the guy, very low key. It's no fancy watch, regular shoes, drives like a Lexus. You know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't. And I'm, over, I'm always very impressed about these people, for a lot of reasons. One, because I think they're very good role models, role models to show people that hey, you should succeed financially and in business, but you don't got to, you don't got to be audacious, you know, audacious and go out there and show it all off. It takes away from so much. It also puts pressure on people. It makes people feel uncomfortable. There's a, there's a lot to now. That doesn't mean that a person uh, should downgrade himself. He should be on a normal standard. Normal. Every, there, there's a, and Baruch Hashem today, it's much easier. The standards today are, are much easier to be. They, back in the day, to get a nice suit, to get a nice car, was a whole thing today. Even the basic cars and the basic things are pretty good. They're not. They're not. Uh, they're not bad. Okay. So. But so going yeah. Back to that. So guy said, you know, I he uh, I regret. he regrets doing all the mitzvot, right? A month later, he says, you know what? I'm sorry. I regret it. Regret. He regret that he regretted. Yeah. yeah. Now do you get. You stop back or fifty percent or I, I, that's a very good question. Can you make teshuvah on regret? Because I know you can make teshuvah on everything. Even a double-edged sword on a person's neck, he should not give up on mercy that God can come and save him at a given point. 
guy has a double barrel shotgun on his head, the guy's about to the trigger, don't give up. God has methods that surpass your intelligence. Just trust him. Just trust him. He'll come through. So he says, yeah, that's a good question. I got to find out. I'll reach out to um, maybe Rabbi Gladstein today and we'll find out can a person, if that happens, can a person get it back? I don't know. It's a good question. Uh, but it's just scary. But it's good you have to know this. You have to know this. Why? Because even if you do a mitzvah and you went through and there was a difficulty, you say, no, Allah, Allah, everything's from God, everything's good, but Hashem, we, can, we move forward. Yeah. Speaking of the donation that I saw Rabbi two days ago, he was telling me this crazy story. He said that the more money someone makes and donates, that you're, not everyone can be in that position. Why? Because that, that person is put in a big position of itself. Why? It's easy when you have money and you want to give for a plaque, this, that, no problem. But then he's like, let's say if you gave $100,000 one week to this organization. You don't think that they're going to come next year and ask for that, and then you're going to say, oh, these guys again. So it's not everyone that's able to, 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 to carry that burden of saying, okay, you know what? This is the time of Chacham. I cannot think bad thoughts about it. Let's continue this push, 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 it's, and it's, grow it's, it's, a, it's a test. Yeah. Lior, don't underestimate yourself. Wealthy people have a much harder test than yes. the simple person. Now, it seems great in the life of Riley, but I can tell you, they have the same problems like everybody else. Just uh, it's a little bit more convenient when they have some <laughs> financial means. Don't kid yourself. Um, th- that's one of the reasons why I started to focus more on learning and teaching because when I observed this as a young age in my teens to early 20s and I saw many of these very successful wealthy people and I saw what was happening in their families I realized that obviously um, business and money is, is a means but it cannot be the goal if you think of it as the goal what ends up happening is you end up acquiring God will give you what you truly wanted and then at the end of the day you'll be like okay and now, now what? And so there is something with spirituality. That's why you see a lot of times, even amongst the non-Jews, the Gentiles, you see when some of these people, they become very uber-rich and successful, they become minimalists. The guy, the guy, the guy becomes like a monk. He drinks green tea all day and, and, and doesn't eats vegan or vegetarian food. He eats strawberries for, uh, all day. But what is this stuff? What, what did this happen? Is that because they have access to everything, they went... They, they wanted to see how much can they live in a minimalist way and, and feel spirituality. I don't know if, they, if they'll call it God, but to feel God in that, in that way, there is something to it. There's a very, very big pleasure to someone who has a lot, lives with little, and focuses on spirituality. There's a special kedusha with it. So it's interesting. So he says, The righteousness of the righteous man won't save him in the day of his wickedness. Only if he regrets the first ones. So you have to be very careful. Very careful. Now, I wonder if this regret further is mentally or verbally. So we have two questions to ask. Can you make the shuvah? And is the regret mentally or verbally? He says, Oh, Maybe in his mind, he's thinking, oh, wow, I don't know, should I, should I have done that? So it's an interesting question. Let's find, we'll find that out from Rabbi Glassing well, today. The second one, who is more emotional than physical. What do you mean? The second the regret, right? You don't regret it in a physical way. The first they're, one... They're both, they're both going to be emotional. They're none of them are physical. How could you regret? Tell me how you re- regret in physical. You mean like... like, like how? You're not, not regretting physical. Now, oh, there is one exception. You, you, you oh, say, oh, you Johnny. Know, Okay. Yeah, I, say I, I gotta tell you this because Rabbi Mansur pointed this out when we learned this Hokal Israel years ago. There is two exceptions, actually, a few exceptions. One of them is Sidaka. Sidaka, money that you give to poor people to Talmidei Chachamim, Yitomim, Almano, to feed them, money that you use physically. That stuff, even if you regret it, you will get full credit. Why? Rabbi Mansur's ex- uh, reasoning was. Okay, when it came to mitzvot that were spiritual, the reward is spiritual. A guy put on tefillin, he regretted he lost that mitzvah because you didn't get anything back. There was nothing physical about that mitzvah in the world. Mm-hmm. Well, when it came to money, Siddhaka, the guy literally just fed a family of aniyim, so he regretted. So what? The, the food's in their belly, they lived on, and they their thing. So when it came to Siddhaka, there was that was different. When it came to regret, the other one is, is learning and teaching Torah. That never goes away. Guy who sits and learns like you're doing right now, learning, reading, delving, all this, that never goes away. It can never go away. In fact, 
Mitzvot and Averot have a different calculation than Torah. When the rabbi said Talmud Torah Keneged Kulam, they were not kidding. They were telling you a rule. What was the rule? Is that in life, there's a mitzvot and averot. Guy does, does good thing, they put the mitzvot on one scale. They put averot on the other one, it goes on the other side. At the end of each year, at the end of the person's life, they look on the scale, they say, okay, which one's more or less? The only one that doesn't get onto that scale and that can tip it tremendously to your favor is limut Torah. God never, ever takes away the fact that you learn, learn Torah. Even if the guy became wicked, he gets full of room. Except if you regret it. No. When it comes to the Torah, you don't. That does not uh, go away. Mitzvot. It's yeah. only mitzvot. So he says, you know, that's why it says, Mish, kol mi nicham alham mitzvot she'asa. He said mitzvot. Because he's talking about the 613 plus the 7 that Rabbanan said, 620. That's one thing. But the category of learning Torah, that does not, it's not inclusive. How many, I can understand somebody says, you know what, I'm done with this. No more for me, but it's for, it's for, I don't. I think it would be extremely rare to find someone that says, "You know, all those mitzvot I did, yeah, I was ready." That's. Yeah, so so I, I you're right. I don't know if a guy would maybe go, not all the mitzvot, but maybe, maybe but maybe he'll. I shouldn't have done that. So uh, it could be busy, it could be bizayon also. Could it could be like. Of, God forbid. Could you think of a mitzvah? Maybe whatever that happened to you, you regret the way. What which mitzvah? Is that? I'll give you. A, here's an example. Okay. You build a shul that's massive. Right. And now it creates conflict among something. That's and, and and now it's oh, I shouldn't have done that. That's an example. Uh, you regret doing it. Okay, so, so um, I, 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 I got to ask because that, that in regard, regard that is, that is, is Sidaka. There's also a physical aspect to it. I want to find out. There's a lot of good questions that we brought up. We asked a few of them. One regards to Sidaka. One, you said the physical, if he builds a structure. I know when it came to Anim, it was not a problem um, to regret. That, but that then he asked if, if he made teshuva on the t- on the regret. That's a good question. I got to find the old sounds. So it's great example. great questions you have on Harambam. Imagine someone says, you know what? Now from now on, I'm here with my rabbi. I want, I, you know, you heard Shul, you got excited, and you took upon yourself to study from nine to one every day. And then you go realize a week later, like, oh, I shouldn't have took that on myself. I don't know what to do with my. No, but, yeah, but that's different. That, he's not regretting because he didn't do anything there. There, he I didn't. He didn't it. actually go to. You're right. He might have regretted taking on such a big burden, but that's okay. Make hatarat nedarim. The results. It's true. It you you make hatarat nedarim. Ali, or you make hatarat nedarim, and you're out. You're good on that. That's okay. That's it's, you're right. So the, it's it's unique cases. Let's find out more. Hadam bam has to be evaluated. Ochshem she shoklim zechiot adam ba'avonot bishat mitato kach bechol shanam shanah shoklim ba'avonot kol echad vechem ribeni ba'eolam im zechiotah beyom tov shel rosh hashanah. So every year, at the, just like at the end of life, they take all your mitzvot and averot and they put them on a scale and they see. By the way, every one mitzvah, one, one avera, they wash him out. That's how it does. Now, by the way, now one mitzvah can equal a thousand averot, and one avera can equal a thousand mitzvot. It's all dependent on the feeling, on the emotion, on, on the gusto that you did each one. And then at the end of each year, God determines the same thing. He puts them on the scale. He determines every year. Then it, God also rules the world. He says the entire earth. How is everybody behaving? All the goyim, the, the non-Jews, the Gentiles, have seven mitzvot that they need to do. Are they doing the seven? Are B'nai Israel doing the 613 plus seven, the 620? Whoever is found to be righteousness, they write him up for, for life. He's found wicked, he gets written down for death. And the binul path of the way, the middle man, they leave him up until Yom Kippur. They leave him. They leave him going. They, give, they hang up. No, no, they, no, they, no. no, no. They leave him in limbo. They hang it. If he make, he made repentance. They'll sign him up as a final for life. If not, they sign him up for death. Even though for life, if not, they sign him up for death. Even though 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 they sign him up for death. These are the people that they sometimes forget with the time what, what, what their obligation is. And so when, they, when you're blowing the shofar, you wake up. You have to wake up cold. 
Ilo shochlim et ha'emet ba'avle ha'zman, they forget the truth with the passing of time, with b'shogim kol shenatam dehevet barik, their entire year is wasted on, on foolishness, on vanities, None of these things are going to help you. All these desires and addictions. Look towards your soul. And make good on your pathway. And each person has to abandon his evil path and the thoughts that are, that are improper. So you guys presented a lot of good questions. I'm going to bring them up to Rabbi Gladstein. And Beli did. I will bring you an answer tomorrow on them. Baruch Adonai Le'odam. Amen. Amen.